Hello and welcome back to the Labyrinth of Grisire. In the last episode we cleared up Michiru's route, and so we move on to the next girl down the list, which is Makia. There's no way I can catch up. When did that thought first convince me to stop running entirely? I can't do it. It's impossible. Those words were enough to stop me dead in my tracks. I knew better than anyone that I needed to change, but that didn't make the challenges in front of me any easier. So at the time I didn't really appreciate it when people carelessly encouraged me to keep at it. Don't give up before you even try. There's no such thing as impossible. You don't have to succeed right away. Let them laugh if they want to. People who stop to mock the losers behind them will always be surprised by the people who keep struggling with every single step they take. Agents who constantly try to pull off something impressive are the ones who die young. Take it slow and carefully. That's what Papa always says. That's my Papa for you. Talk about your words of wisdom. That's a pretty badass look. Hold on. There we go. Screen thumbnail. Safe and sound for YouTube. It's been a year now since the two of us moved over to Florida. I carried out a bunch of jobs in the States and now I've been ordered back home to earn my license to work in Japan. At the moment I'm working under the number V1929. V stands for Virginia. Means I'm just Papa's support. He is still I1929. I'm officially his spotter, not an agent in my own right. To be honest, I ain't too happy about that state of affairs. I can handle things just fine on my own by now, but Papa's still not letting me take any of the killing jobs. Have you ever hated someone enough that you wanted to kill them? Here's the thing. People who kill for a reason like that, like that are nothing more than murderers. Or so Papa tell, tells me. First he convinces me I can do every, anything I set my mind to, and he tells me I'm not ready yet. Seems like some pretty dang missed messages there, am I right? Still, Papa's my master and all, so I don't have much choice but to bite my tongue and to give him a cute little nod. Sure, I've been known to yell, stop treating me like I kid sometimes, but that's just how Papa gets going. Maybe when you stop acting like one. Honestly, how about listening to your father for once? Is this one of those rebellious faces I've heard so much about? Usually follows that up by pinching the bridge of his nose, looking up at the sky and letting out a big dramatic sigh. Way I see it, the sooner I'm pro in my own right, the sooner Papa can ease into a nice peaceful retirement. But according to Papa, I shave a few years of his life every time I head into the field alone. I mean, I see where he's coming from and all. The jobs I've taken care of so far haven't really been that impressive. Yes, there was that one time with that robber who holed up in the video rental store night, one night after the police surrounded him. There just happened to be an unlucky senator in there who'd stop by to pick, a por pick up a porno, so they sent me over for a super discreet rescue op. Shot the gun right out of that punk's hand. Yes, that's about it though. Oh! Stopping in my track as I glance down at the digital pet hanging from my waist, careful to remain aware of my surroundings. 672 steps. Since my old digital pet died a tragic death while serving as a makeshift detonation device, Papa was kind enough to buy me a replacement. This guy is a brand new 4th generation model with an onboard GPS that allows it to display the path you've walked on a little map. So this is the halfway point, huh? Heading out right over to the tallest building in the area, I take the elevator to the top floor. Then head out onto the emergency stairs, tie some duct tape that I've bought in a hardware store around the handrail, fix a wind gauge to the roof of the penthouse. I've already repeated this process four times so far. Man, this would be a heck of a lot easier if everyone was flying a flag for some national holiday or other. Well, guess you can't always get what you want. At times like these, I always find myself recalling another of my papa's maxims. A job well done is the result of a steady, simple effort. Shortcuts are a recipe for failure. The words of Akasumi Yuji. Hello, Yuji. It's been a while. Has it? We just talked on the phone last week. 
Yes, but we haven't seen each other face to face in some time. Hmm. Did you lose a little weight again? Yes, thanks to a certain someone who seemed to take pleasure in making my life difficult. Just to be clear, it's not my fault the governor's barbecue party was ruined last month. That was all Machina. And where's the young lady in question? She isn't coming today. Apparently she doesn't want to see Kiara. Excuse me, what's that supposed to mean? Did you seriously let Machina run off the, um, alone the moment she got back to Japan? It was just a joke. Magen has gone to say hello to her mother. Come again? Isn't that going to be a problem? On multiple levels? Won't be a problem at all. Trust me. You may be trustworthy I-9029, but V-9029 is still highly unreliable. And more importantly, I am her case officer. Why wasn't I informed of any of this? Look, she is not a child. Do you really want your agents calling you up every time they run out of toilet paper? That's really not the point. What are we going to do if something happens? No need to worry. I'll take full responsibility if anything goes wrong. Anyway, how about showing a little faith in the girl? In this line of work, we need trust more than time or money. Ah, uh, not sure why you're glaring at me. Just for the record, I do trust you, Jim. Okay. And that's taking into consideration the fact that he's a stubborn, contrary, rude little cuss. Not to mention a stupidly soft-hearted wimp with a talent for making women cry. You're too kind. I love you, Yuji. Yeah, right back at you, Yulia. Um, are you two making fun of me? Hmm, you noticed. You got potential, kid. Guess you're not an idiot after all. Pardon me, I'm going to go look for Makina. Don't tease the poor thing, the poor thing too much. She's trying her best to follow in my footsteps, you know. Oh, well, if you want me to be nice, I'll have to show her some love next time. Ah, please don't. A dose of your love and her hair is going to start falling out from stress. Talk about rude. I'm not a monster, you know. Anyway, are you sure you want to leave this alone? What, the Kiara thing or Machina? Both. Hmm, well. Don't you think it's about time those two had a bit of a wake-up call? Magin has learned enough in training that she's starting to think she can do anything on her own. And Kiara still can't look past the number 1929. At the end of the day, an agent needs orders. Without their case officer, they're just useless killing machines. And all that legendary number stuff is mostly just a story the instructors made up to light a fire under the butts of newbies. It's so absurdly exaggerated, they might as well be talking about some invincible comic book Superman. Doesn't bear much resemblance to reality. Hell, the only reason I'm still alive because I had you behind the scenes reading the situation and issuing the appropriate instructions. In that sense, I really do trust you, JP, and I'm grateful to you. <sighs> look, this is exactly why people call you a playboy. Don't feed me lines like that with such a serious look on your face. Who do you think you're fooling? I mean, you disobey every third order I give you without batting an eye. But you take that into consideration before you issue them, don't you? Anyway, I lost my right arm last time I tried going rogue on you. I learned my lesson for good. So, you might remember that in Machina's route, in the good ending of Machina's route, uh, in the fruit of Kresaya, Yuji infiltrated Machina's mother's uh, business complex and even got close to her, posing as a, as a janitor. And uh, he was supposed to inform her that to leave Makia alone, something that her mother didn't plan to due to family business rights and heirs and such. <clears throat> However, Yuji, on the way back out, got into a bit of a tussle with the security who had a shotgun with slugs in it. While he survived the blast, he got severely wounded in his right arm, so not a lethal shot in any way. But, and the ending scene actually showed him having a, having a, a new composite arm made as a, sort of a, a stand-in. Right, let's continue. I sincerely hope that's true. Maybe I'll be able to relax enough to put a little weight back on. Don't go overboard. Your car might start turning to the left on its own every time you hit the gas. I'm not planning to gain that much weight. 
No worries. If it gets too bad, I'll get in the passenger seat to balance things out. An agent and his case officer are a team, after all. Have you gotten used to the prosthetic arm? Hmm. More or less. It's a little heavy and I have to charge it up twice a day. Can't say I enjoy taking all that medication either, but other than that, it's not so bad. Anyway, I can do my work well enough to with just my left arm. You're intending to continue working then? Losing an arm isn't enough to make me useless. I was trained better than that. I guess marathon missions would probably be tough, but it should be a problem as long as I've got Magna helping out on the quick jobs. Are you alright with that? With what? Magna helping out. You ended up getting her involved. I've talked it over with the girl herself countless times. Can't change the past now. We could wi wipe her memory with medication, you know. Mentioned that. She told me she'd rather die. Don't worry, I'll look after her. Well, if that's really alright with you, then I won't press the matter any further. By now, I think I'm actually grateful it worked out this way. Setting my empty coffee cup on the table, I glanced down at my watch. Whoops, about time for me to get going. I have to pick up Makita. Kiara's already doing that, isn't she? What? You think she's going to find her? I didn't train the girl that badly. Anyway, the coffee was good. Thanks. Kiara's the one who made it. Really? Alright then. Give that nice big bot of hers a pat and say thanks for me. It was mentioned in the previous one where... Also in, also in Magnus' route that... Um, Kiara's butt was rather well formed. Uh, I think the uh, JB explained this as being because she was one third African of descent. I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but apparently that's a thing. I got Markner involved in this. I'm aware of that, of course. Naturally, there's a part of me that regrets it. There's a part of me that thinks I could have found a better way. Like they say, though, hindsight is 2020. I know there's no point in dwelling on what I could have done. I know it's all in the past now. But sometimes I can't help thinking. Isn't there anything I can do? Isn't there any way I can live the rest of my life without regret? Sometimes I just can't help it. Here we go. Rooftops are usually under lock and key. In other words, anyone who opens the lock can get access to them and there isn't a whole lot of random foot traffic. Removing my rifle from its case, which I pulled up here on a cart, I whip out my digital ratchet torque, torque wrench and begin the assembly process. When distances like these are involved, you've got to tighten every screw perfectly, and there's no telling where your bullets are going to end up. Using the corrections that worked during training as a reference, I carefully assemble my rifle. Just to be on the safe side, I snap in my laser bore sight and focus on a tire 10 meters away. The offset's almost exactly the same as last time I used it. Alright, looking pretty good. Next, I set up a wind gorge mounted on a tall rod, spread out a mat and lay myself down on top of it. Pulling data over the internet from the other gorges, I from the other the other gorges, I've set up the area. I set up around the area. I do a, f a few quick calculations on my laptop while starting up my ballistics calculator program. Wind from the south, average speed 13 meters per second, gust factor 2.4, uplift radio 3.8. Flow separation correction 12.3, standard deviation 19.8% when ignoring vortex regions. Comparing the numbers on the laptop screen to the way my strap of tape was actually fluttering when I looked at it through my scope, I plugged in an additional correction found, found it through personal experience. Once my final number appeared on the screen, I quickly adjust the elevation and windage knobs to on my scope to match. Fire and range. The pedometer hanging from my waist provides a GPS corrected number of 1,947 steps. Every step I tape, take covers about 65.2 centimeters, so that's a total of 12,000. 12, hmm, 12, that's a really, really weird way to place the comma. What would that be? 129,644.4 centimeters, or 1,269 
0.444 meters. My target's approximately 1,270 meters away. 1,300, eh? I might be pushing it a bit. I've only got two bullets for this one. The first is a tungsten core penetrator. The other is a specially modified hot rod, designed for maximum speed and flight stability. The penetrator is going to open a hole in, an obst in the obstacle between me and my target, but I just have to shoot the hot rod through it. The penetrator can only punch at me a 9cm hole, and I gotta land the next shot through it. Talk about threading a needle, makes my head hurt just thinking about it. Well, they say Papa can pull off this sort of trick every time, and if he can do it, there's no reason I can't. Oh ho! Time to get started! Even the most legendary of snipers need to rely on a little medical help at times. And so, the next item I retrieve from my pocket is a small silver case containing a number of pills. Selecting a booster specifically designed for marksmen, I toss it into my mouth. Ugh! I can't stand medicine. Always hated it ever since I was a kid. But when the air... But when the need arises, you gotta do what you gotta do. You don't need water with this particular pill. After chewing it for a minute or so, your eyeballs tighten up and go red. The tears begin to flow uncontrollably down your cheeks. In return, you are able to see perfectly at long distances, and you can go a good seven minutes without wanting to blink. <laughs> yeah, I can see. Man, I can I see. Peering through my digital rife scope, I study the top floor of Irisu Global Headquarters. Specifically, the window of the president's office. The window reflects the sunlight like a mirror, but by now I can clearly make out my mother casually sipping tea inside. Okie dokie, loading rifle. Unsipping my urethrine, urethrine ammo pouch, I examine the bullets within. There's a ribbon painted on both, one blue and one red. The blue ribbon means penetrator. Pulling back on my rifle's bolt handle, I gently push the blue bullet into the exposed chamber, then return the bolt to the forward position. Loaded and ready. Right shoulder ready, left shoulder ready, holding position to fire. All I gotta do now is wait for my laptop, currently crunching numbers in real time, to give me the go sign, and then pull the trigger. And that concludes this morning's report. I see. That will be all then. There's one matter unrelated to our operation that I wanted to bring to your attention. We received a, a report that number 1929 has returned to Japan. Oh, you don't say. What of it? Well, ma'am, perhaps it would be wise to arrange for a bodyguard or something of that nature. Surely there's no need for that. I mean, the boy was fortunate to survive our last encounter. Do you really think he's suicidal enough to rush back in now? It is also reported that Miss Markina has returned to yet Japan along with him. Ah, I truly couldn't care less. Serena's recovery has been proceeding nicely, after all. Given that we've managed to secure Ichigai's silence, I no longer have any interest whatsoever in Makina. Moving on. You've been bringing me some distinctly substandard tea recently, Sawada. It's bitter and completely lacking in fragrance. I apologize. I did try to replace our supply of leaves when I noticed they seemed to be going a bit stale. But I believe you yourself called it a complete waste and threw something of a tantrum until I desisted. I don't remember doing any such thing. In any case, make me a new cup. This one's vile. Oh, yes, right away. Ooh. The muck in Irisu Kyoka's hand suddenly shatters. So holding its handle, she quizzically tilts her head 15 degrees to the right. What on earth was that? Eek! Cowering her head with her document binder, the secretary, Miss Sawara, proceeds to dock down onto the floor. Perplexed, Kiyoka turns around to discover the wind whistling through a 9cm hole in her bulletproof glass window, now white with cracks. Huh? What the...? Reflexively tossing her handle of the mock aside, she ducks for cover behind the mahogany desk in blind panic. What do you think you're doing, Sawara? Stop hiding yourself like a coward! Eek! Please stay away from me, Kiyoka-sama! Hey, stop moving! You've got to protect me, dammit! How am I supposed to do that? Uh, we got to call someone. Right, the phone. Kyoko sama look out! Huh? Yeah! Kyoko sama it's no good. The phone's broken. Uh, it hurts my hand, my hand. It's bleeding. Did you lose a finger? A piece of the phone hit me. Uh, it hurts. Swada, you got a cell phone. Don't you hurry up and call for help. You can't expect me to do that. They'll shoot me next. I've had enough. 1929 is too scary. I quit. I'm going back home to the country. So, so what? Wait, I, 
Are you leaving me behind? Hold it right there! Stay away from me, man! Ah, you traitor! <laughs> what a shame! All out of bullets. Hey, I'm mom. I'm home. Did you miss me? <laughs> now that that's what I call a greeting card. Too bad it cost me two special order rounds worth a good 800 yen each. Ah well, it's a small price to pay for giving that old hack a lifelong terror of windows. Serves you right. Bleh. I think that was satisfying enough to tide me over for a while. But don't go thinking you've seen the last of me, mommy dearest. Yow, I got God, my freaking head's killing me! As the tension drains from my body, the usual post-sniping headache kicks in right on schedule. I've got to take my blockers dead or I'll end up losing consciousness. Ugh. I can't stand medicine. I always hated it, ever since I was a kid. Before long, my dilated pupils begin to shrink and I can feel my heart rate returning to normal. Ah, crap, my nose running. Taking a tissue from my skirt pocket, I blow my nose and start putting away my gear. Halfway through the process, I look, glance at my digital pet to check the time. Whoopsie, gotta go meet up with Papa soon. <laughs> And that's where we'll end the first episode. So, we shall see how the ongoing sniping and possible harassment of Irisu Mark, of, uh, of Kyoka Makina, Kyoka Irisu, goes in the next episode. But until then, take care.